This video will be a basic introduction to how to make a pair of conventional sawhorses with simple power tools. Decisions regarding design, engineering trade-offs, and the practicality of how this is done will be discussed. For those who want to duplicate this classic design, a parts and tools list will be provided at the end. It's just about time to replace these trusty old wooden sawhorses. I'm going to take you along for the ride. Now I bought these sawhorses here in about 1990 and the great thing about them is that they're still alive now. They've survived a move. The other old wooden sawhorses I had I left behind. But that's just about the only thing I can say good about them. The great thing about them of course is they can uh, stack away. They're really compact and so if you have a problem with space and they're an ideal choice. But all of the advantages end there. These things are fragile and rickety and you can't stand on them. They, they fall over. They're not very well built at all. I wouldn't recommend metal sawhorses at all. Now this classic wooden design is perfect for my uses and I'd continue using it but for the fact that the sawhorse is uh, rotting out on the bottom where the uh, wood meets the dirt. First thing you want to think about is height. The 32 inch height is just about perfect for me. If you're going to use the sawhorse as some kind of a ladder or if you're going to put 2x10s or 2x12s between them and stand on it, you're going to need it to be lower. You're going to need some kind of a step to step on. But that's not the case here. We use it mainly for painting. I really like the 2x10 size here and I'd like it to stick out further but remember if it sticks out a long ways you're going to have trouble stacking them so engineering is always going to be a series of compromises and the same thing with a shelf some people put a shelf on the bottom but the problem with the shelf is it doesn't allow you to stack and if you put a shelf on one of them then the other one's always going to be in the dirt and so it's not going to last as long these things stack pretty well and uh, that's a reasonable plan for what I'm looking at, so I'm going to re reproduce that. Now the second uh, issue is what are you going to make it out of, and I happen to have some 2x6 pressure treated wood that's left over from a, another project, a deck project, and so I'm going to use 2x6s here, but that's going to be heavier than a 2x4 design that you see uh, presently. Some people use 1x4, and that's okay indoors, but for outdoors you want something that's, I think, a little bit more durable, so you're sacrificing um, uh, strength and durability for weight. Now here's the interesting thing about sawhorses. They're both splayed, where this, the two legs are splayed apart by about 15 degrees off of vertical, and also they're splayed out this way, either way, and I'm going to do that about 15 degrees as well. And so what that means is that this part here is going to be 15 degrees off of vertical. That's a fairly classic design. I've jumped ahead a little bit to show you what these things look like. This is the keystone. You saw me cut this on the table saw. And basically this is just a long board with a 15 degree cut on each side. And I've got it upside down now so when the legs are bolted on, they'll bolt on like this. And the purpose of the keystone, of course, is to get the angles exactly right. Now you don't have to do it that way. You could take a hammer and chisel and spend hours cutting out little um, tenons to get this perfect, but almost inevitably you're going to have one leg that's a bit wonky. It's very hard to get the angles right, and this is very simple on a, either a table saw or a circular saw. Now here's the leg, and the leg has a, the most interesting cut of all, a compound cut, and it, you can see it's 15 degrees off of square here. We're going to do that with a speed square, and it's 15 degrees here uh, that we're going to use with the uh, circular saw. I'll show you how to do that now. Uh, the important thing to know is that the plane of the two cuts, these are the same on both sides. The plane has to be parallel to each other when you're finished. Now let's adjust our skill saw. Now the angle we're looking for is on this legend right here. It's at zero at the moment, 15, 30, and 45, and we want to go to 15. Now the mark we're looking for, it's a bit hard for you to see, but it's right there on this, see this black triangle, right there there's a dot, a punch mark. I don't know if you can see it, but I'm gonna move that punch mark out to 15 as best I can. You've actually got a better angle than I do, so loosen this off, move up, get it to 15. Now we're talking carpentry accuracy, so it needs to be within about a degree, but it doesn't have to be perfect. So here's what 15 degrees looks like on the skill saw underneath. You can only adjust it one way, and so you need to adjust the direction of travel so you end up with the result you want. The first time I started putting sawhorses together, I had the bias that they're left-handed legs and right-handed legs. And if you think about that, that makes a lot of sense. But look what happens. It's not defined what's top and bottom. And so you can flip the one side over and it becomes the other side. So really you're only making one style of leg. You just have to make sure the top and bottom are parallel.
So you need to get the angle right here, and we're going to use a scale here. It says 5, 10, 15. We're going to use this number 15 right here. And we put the point right on the end, and then rotate it until 15 is parallel to the edge right there. And then just make our mark. So one measurement that I'm repeating time and again is the length. I got 32 and 3 quarters from the pointy end of the leg to um, this end here. I'll do that again and again. And this angle also will be 15 degrees. The same thing, here's that 15 right there. Put it on the end, line it up with the side, and there we are. The trick is to make sure you cut it the correct way so that it gives the correct angle. In this case, we want it to kind of go like that. So you have to attack it from the right side with a circular saw. Now I've got the sawhorses upside down. Even though this is pressure treated wood, when you cut through it like that, you leave the uh, inside wood exposed, which makes it vulnerable. And of course, that's gonna be the limiting factor in terms of how long these survive. And so I'm gonna use this end cut preservative on the bottom of these things to try and get a little more life. I mentioned I made the compromise of extending this out a little bit, sacrificing some element of stackability. But these still stack okay. And I'm happy with that. Here's my finished product. A two by six design is so much more beefy and stable and there's no wobble at all, at least on a flat concrete surface. I think it's important to use screws and glue rather than nails because the joints will shrink over time and it'll get wobbly. Along that same line of loosening over time, I thought about putting a brace in across here on each side, but I don't think I'll do that. It's plenty strong now and I can always add that in later if I need to. A brace in this position makes it a little bit harder to get through doors and tight spaces. So I hope this video helped you out for your project. Thanks for watching.